Hey everyone. So sometimes if your model gets hit with a lot of data every day, it can eventually become stale. That is, it can start to not generalize well to the new data and give much worse performance than it used to when the model was first put into production. Now you can take the new data and merge it with the old data that you used to train the original model with. However, instead of starting from scratch, you can actually take the model you already have and retrain it with the new data. And ML.NET has the ability to retrain models, and that's what I'll show how to do in this video. But first, to get started, I'm in the ML.NET documentation for retraining a model, and I just want to highlight that only these trainers are the ones that you can currently be able to retrain with. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're building your original model, that you, if you know you're going to retrain it, or even if you're not sure, you want to take a look at this documentation and see if any of these trainers work with the problem that you already have, so you, that you can use it to be retrained. And before we start coding, I want to show just a little bit of a difference that we have to do when we create our original model than what we've done in the past. So I'm in this project here where I create the model and we do the usual stuff here. I uh, create a new ML context, I load the data, and then I get my features that I want to train with. But right here, I create a pipeline that's strictly just the data preparation where I create my transforms. And then I fit on the data for that. And then I create another small pipeline here that's just that the trainer that we're going to use. And I'm using the Poisson regression. And if you look back, at this documentation, you see that the Poisson regression is the one that is able to be retrained. Then I merge the data preparation pipelines with the trainer pipelines to get my full pipeline here. Then I use that to create my model. Now here's a, another difference here. I save the full model like usual, but here I save the data preparation pipeline by itself. And then I save the trainer pipeline by itself as well. And we're going to use these two saved pipelines to be able to retrain our models. And speaking of saving our models, I have the data prep and the training models here saved in my Azure blob storage. Uh, in fact, I'm going to get these from the blob storage here when I go to retrain my model. So let's go ahead and start writing the code to retrain our model. All right, so I'm here in Visual Studio. I have a console project loaded up here and First thing is first, let's download the latest version of ML.NET and it's going to be the 1.4 version. All right, and let's also get the Azure Blob Storage package. All right, and I'm going to create a new folder just to hold the models where we download them. The first thing I'm going to create here are a couple of file paths. First is going to be flat trainer. And I do a path that combine to create my my training path here. I'm going to use the directory that get current directory, and I'm going to go back three times in the file directory, and that's when I'll go to the models folder that we created, and I'm going to call it housing trainer zip, and that's the same thing we called it in. Uh, Azure Blob Storage. And I'm going to do the same thing for the pipeline model there. Housing data prep. And I'm going to get a reference to the model directory itself. That's going to be a path combine. Now I'll just take the pipeline file path and I'll go up one item. All right, now let's connect to our storage account. And I'll use the cloud storage account static class on that NuGet package we got. And we'll parse out this connection string that I've already added here. Next, we'll get the client from the storage account by creating cloud blob client. And then we'll get a reference to the container with the client using git container reference. The container is models, and I'm going to get a reference to the data prep model, the container, I get block blob reference, it's housing data prep.zip. I'm going to do the same thing 
for the training housing trainer and I'm gonna call it training model now that I have those references to the files on my storage account I can make an if check if the file exists or the file doesn't exist uh, we'll do the pipeline path first and if the directory that it's in doesn't exist do the model directory we will do we'll create that directory and since the file already doesn't exist we'll await on the data model that download to file async pass in that pipeline path and we'll give it the file mode to create we have a small error here because we're using an await in the method isn't async so we just put async on it instead it's not file model it's file mode there you go and we'll do the same if check here file that exists if it doesn't exist this time it's going to be on the training file path if it doesn't exist we'll download the training model to file training file path and it's still going to be the file mode that create all right, so that should give us our, both our, our data prep and our training files from Azure Storage. Now for the ML.NET part, we can start by creating our context. And then we're actually going to use the context.model.load methods to load in our models. And we'll use trainer file path. This next parameter is an, an output parameter. So what, what we can do as we saw it was a data view schema type so we're going to create the variables here for our model schema and then again for our pipeline schema then we can do out model schema and we can do the same thing with our pipeline if you're using the newer versions of c sharp you can actually make this inline this variable declaration inline there by saying out the type of the variable and then the model schema and it will just inline when you compile it will kind of do the same thing that you have had that we had before next thing we need to do is we need to get the original model parameters from our model from our training model here and to do that we're gonna gonna take our training model and then we're eventually gonna call the model property from it but as you can see here, we get an error and we don't get any intelligence that that model property exists. So what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to cast this trainer model into an interface. And it's gonna be a specific interface and it's called a single feature prediction transformer. And it's generic, and, but we can just pass in an object in here. And from there, we get that model property, but we're not done yet. From here, it's just another object because we cast it in here. And so what we can do is we can cast that as the Poisson regression model parameters. And I'm using Poisson regression because if you remember when we created the model, we used a Poisson regression trainer. So that's why I'm using the Poisson regression model parameters here. And that gives us our original model parameters. Now we need to give it some new data to train on. So I got some new data here. I'll pull this over and I'll make sure that this copies over. And just to take a look at it real quick. It's gonna be the same structure as our original housing data set. I got the same header and just uh, about five rows here of some new data that I wanna to add to it. And to read this, I can just go and use the file.read all lines and pass in the file name here I mean I'll just use some link magic to read in the data here first thing I'm gonna do is skip the first line because if you remember that first line is the header so I don't need to use that then I'll select each line and from each line I'll will split on it using a comma because it was comma delimited and I'm gonna take each of those while the row isn't null or white space 
just so I know when it stops when it, there's an empty line in the data and then I'll select then I'll select each row it's gonna be a new housing data and we don't have this in here so I will create this real quick and I'll just paste in what we've had in previous videos it just defines what that schema of the data file is going to be based on the headers then I'll paste in the mappings of input file to our properties here and you see all of these are floats so I just parse them and the last one is a string so I just take that as is and then I'll take the parse data here and I'll use the context that data that load from enumerable to take this I enumerable of the data and create an I data view from it so we can work with it in ML.net and I'll transform then I'll use the data prep model that we loaded and I'll call the transform on it and give it our new data so I can perform those data transformations that we already specified in the previous solution and then I can retrain the model now using the context regression trainers and I'm going to use that same Poisson regression then I'll fit on it and then in here in previous times that we when you when you're first training on the model you're just going to give it the transform data but remember when we created our when we got our original model parameters we can pass that in as kind of a baseline to to follow in when it fits on this new data. That's how it knows to retrain because it already has the baseline of the original model parameters to re retrain on. And then we can get the new model parameters from the retrain model and that has some model property on it and I'll cast it to that Poisson regression model parameters object. And the way to kind of let you know that your model has retrained is that we can get the weight diffs the difference in our model weights here or the, or the parameters that we just used and we can do that by getting the original model parameters get the weights property on it and then we'll call the zip method and what this is going to do is it's going to take the weights collection here and then I can pass it in a new collection so I'll pass in the new model parameters weights as well and now I have access to both of those at the same time and then I can call a method on it and I'll use a lambda here and I can get the original and then the updated values so the original is going to be the values in here the original model parameter weights then the weight is going to be in the new model parameter weights and the, the method I'm just going to use is just take the difference from the original and the updated model weights and then I will send that to an array and then I'll do a console right line here I'm just gonna say I'll print out the original tab over print out the retrained model parameters and I'll specify the difference now do a for loop within the weight diffs that count then from here do another console right line and so the original model parameters that weights at the index tab over do the new model parameters weights at that index tab over then I do the weight diffs at the that index and to make sure the console stays up I'll do a read line on it alright so let's run this and see how well this model retrained alright it's like we have an error here specify container does not exist so let's see right, oh, it helps if we spell our container correctly here so let's try this again alright so we have our we have our original parameters and then our retrained ones and we have a difference here it's not m not much of a difference but then again we only have five new rows of data that we added to it so I'm sure the, the more new data that you give it uh, the more difference you'll probably see here 
And all right, I'll leave things here. Thanks for watching. I hope you got a little bit out of this. And I'll see y'all next time. Thanks.